In this module, you learn how to create purdings. Purdings are placed as beams in Revit. The most efficient method to place purdings is to use a beam system set out on an inclined work plane. The beam system can be removed afterwards to give you individual control over each purding. The purdings are located in the light gauge steel folder. Go ahead and open up project A. In this video, we're going to take a look at the placement of purdings on our roof. Let's begin by loading in a relevant family. To do this, we'll select the Insert ribbon, and on the Insert ribbon, we'll select Load Family. In the UK folder, let's navigate to Structural Framing, and then we'll navigate to Light Gauge Steel. And in here, you can see all of our various different sections. In this example here, we're looking for Light Gauge C Purlins, so we'll select this member here, and once again, this is catalog driven, so if we click open, you can then see we're presented with the catalogue. Now in this example here, we're looking for the um, section size 202, and then we're looking for C15. So this is the one we want to use. So we'll click OK, and that's now loaded in, ready to be used. Now ultimately, the quickest way to place out these purlins is to use a beam system. But before I do that, I'd like to just show you how we could create a single purlin on this inclined plane. To do this, I'll go ahead and switch to the roof plan. Let's now model a beam. We'll select the structure ribbon and select beam. Notice in the properties palette in the type selector, we currently have our MetSec section loaded in. And on the options bar, you can see here we have our placement plane. Now you can see here the placement plane is matching our roof. So here I've got 04 roof and of course the level is 04 roof. However, we can switch this to a named reference plane. And you may remember in a previous module, we created our reference plane called roof. So let's select that. And now let's model in a member. Now, another thing we have to be mindful of is when we start to model things here, normally we're defining top of steel. But in this case, if we're creating purdings, we want to be defining the bottom of steel. So in the properties palette, let's go ahead and change the Z justification from top to bottom. And now, if I wanted to model in my first purdin, I could start about here, and I could then model the purdin across, and perhaps terminate just here. I'll model another one in. And now, let's review this in 3D. So, going back to the 3D view, we can now see that we have our two purdins modelled in. Of course, the key thing to see here is that they're raking in the same way that our roof is. So, of course, they're modelled on that reference plane. If I select this, you can now see in the properties palette, the work plane is reference plane roof. Another key thing to understand is that you'll see that the section is currently perpendicular to that plane. So, let's get a proper left-hand view here. And we'll zoom up on these purlins. And we can clearly see here that this isn't vertical. If I wanted this section to be vertical, I could select it, and in the properties palette, you'll see that we have a special parameter called orientation. Currently, it's set to normal. What that means is it's normal to the work plane that it was created on. If I set this to horizontal, you can now see that the purdin is horizontal. Now, of course, when you're creating certain roofing members, it can be very useful to have these set horizontal rather than normal to the work plane. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete both of those members. And what we're going to do now is use the beam system to quickly place out our light gauge purlins. So we'll switch back to our roof plan. We'll just zoom out a little bit here. And we'll now go ahead and select beam system. Notice here we can use the keyboard shortcut BS for beam system. We're also informed here that if we are using a work plane, then we can't use the one click creation tool. That's fine. So we'll click close here. And just to check that we are in fact using the proper work plane, you can see here in the properties palette under work plane, we have reference plane roof. If that wasn't set correctly, you could simply click the set button up here and you could then define the reference plane or the level, in fact, that you might want to work on. Of course, here we've got reference plane roof. That's the one we want to be working with. We can now start to define the perimeter of our purdings. Now, the first thing I'd like to do here is define an offset from pick lines. So I'll select pick lines, and here I want an offset of 600. What I can then do is pick this grid here and this grid here, and you can see I've now got the relevant offset. Now, of course, we don't want the purdings inside our core area, so we'll go back to pick lines again, and here we're going to just pick off the boundary of our core. Of course, let's make sure that we've set our offset back to zero, 
and now we can start to pick around the boundary of our core area. Now, of course, there will be a quite a bit of trimming required to get a proper closed boundary here, but that's what we want there. We can then go to the standard line tool and we can then finalize this by sketching a line across here. Of course, in this area here, this is where we've got our uh, circular section. So we'll make sure that we don't put burdens around that. And now we just need to use the trim extender corner to close up all of these lines. And in fact, you can see I've just missed one at the top here. So we'll add that in as well. And we'll go here and use trim extender corner. Again, you can type in TR, which is the quick way of doing this. But now we pick the bits we want to keep and we can go around and create a closed boundary. We've got to do the same thing for our internal area here, which is the core, making sure that we've gone around each corner and not leaving any gaps or bits that are overhanging. OK, so that looks pretty good at the minute. Notice at the minute the span direction is incorrect. So once again, on the context ribbon, we can select beam direction. And here I can simply now pick another line that represents the beam direction. OK, so that's looking pretty good at the minute. I'm not too worried about the precise dimensions here because obviously I'm going to set a precise distance between each of these purlins, which will define where it actually ends anyway. So moving on to that, you can see in the properties palette currently I've got a maximum spacing set up here and my beam type is a universal beam. Well, let's go ahead and start to configure this. So in actual fact here, we want to make sure that we are using our uh, Metsec purlin. We want to make sure that the layout rule in this example is set to fixed distance. And I'm going to have a fixed distance of 900 between each of my purlins. For the justification, I want this to be at the beginning of the bay. We can obviously adjust that later if it doesn't work out for us. And go ahead and finalize this by selecting finish edit mode. We can now see all of our purlins have been added into the model. Let's go into the 3D view. And of course here we can see that the sections aren't quite right. We need to change the Z direction offset. So we'll select one of the members. We can then go ahead and select all instances visible in the view. In our properties palette, we can simply now go ahead to the Z justification and we'll change this from top. And again here, we'll make sure that this is on bottom of steel. Okay, so you can now see all of our purlins in place. So, of course, that's a much quicker way to create those purlins rather than placing each one manually. Now, we might want individual control over some of these purlins so we can adjust them. And, for example, we might want to sort of shift them down or perhaps add extra ones in. So to do this, we can simply select our beam system and then we can remove the beam system. Now, of course, that's going to now remove the intelligence of that beam system. But we now have the function of being able to individually control each beam as required. Finally, I'm going to set the material to be galvanized. So I'm going to select one of these framing members here. We'll then right mouse click, select all instances visible in view. In the properties paddock, you can see the structural material needs to be set. So we'll go ahead and browse for a material. In our materials browser, I'm going to type in uh, galvanize or just the first three letters of that. That should be enough. OK, and I can see now in the library at the bottom here, I've got two materials for galvanized steel. So I'm going to go ahead and use this first one here and we'll add that into the document. We'll then select that and click OK. And there are our purlins. OK, so let's ensure that we've saved our project. So we'll go ahead and click Save. And that concludes this video.